I'm Hazus, and in this video, we're going to be looking at Phantom Lord. Now, this is a video I've wanted to make for a while, and the reason his story really fascinates me so much is that I could never quite wrap my head around why this guy behaved the way he did. It's this bizarre cycle that lasted for years of a man doing everything in his power to drag himself as deep into the mud as possible, under some sort of delusion that if he rolled around in it for long enough, he might come out looking squeaky clean. Well, one thing is for sure though, it definitely didn't work. Now, if you're wondering who this guy is, he was once one of the biggest streamers on Twitch. These days though, he's one of the biggest disgraces in Twitch history, a man that screwed up so badly that his career was effectively over in the space for a few days. But most interesting of all, he was a man destroyed by the very characteristics that made him a success in the first place. And I wanna do a bit of a post-mortem on things. And if anything else, it's a bloody entertaining story. Now, often when I do videos like this, it's on some sort of serious topic that isn't fit for advertising, but that is not the case with this topic. This video is proudly sponsored by Skinport, the easy to use skins marketplace where you can sell your skins for all cash. More about them later. And with that out of the way, it's time I told the tragic tale of Phantom Lord. Thank you guys, uh, all of you to, uh, who posted. Uh... So the story of Phantom Lord begins in 2011 with a young man called James Varga, who's doing menial work at a Best Buy in Los Angeles. Now, James had a hobby, which was playing League of Legends. And on the server, he had the username Phantom Lord. And in 2011, he started streaming himself playing it on a platform called own3d.tv. Now, there are very, very few traces left from this time. In fact, most of the evidence for it is actually in court submissions for a lawsuit that we're gonna talk about at the end of the video. And based on these, it appears that he quickly became one of the most popular streamers on the platform, getting anything from 500 to 5,000 viewers, which was really good numbers for the time. But by 2012, Own3D was in serious financial trouble and was generally considered to be inferior to the streaming platform Twitch, leading for fans to call for Phantom to transfer over, which in November 2012, he did, signing an exclusive contract with Twitch. And from here, his streams only kept on growing. Now, we don't know exactly what sort of viewership he was getting at the time, but his videos on YouTube by mid-2013 were regularly getting 100,000 views, and the secret to his success appeared to be twofold. Firstly, he played a very distinctive angry gamer-style character on stream, which, while somewhat divisive, definitely stood out, particularly when combined with his very over-the-top persona known for strong reactions and poor mic quality. It might not necessarily work on modern day Twitch, but at the time, it played really well with the audience. But secondly, and maybe more importantly, he was also really good at League. In fact, he reportedly made it to rank one on September 26, 2011. Now, he also seemed like a very genuine sounding guy at the time. In fact, he'd post these videos where he'd be very open discussing his persona and the direction it was going in. But what interests me about these videos is that even by early 2013, he was starting to talk about how he was having trouble keeping up the over the top persona. I, I can't do what you guys want me to do every single time. Um, I am growing older, I am maturing. If you've noticed, my personality is way more mature. And that is something that's really interesting considering what followed. Now, for the most part, 2013 was a great year for him. In fact, it seems like at some point during this year, he actually set a record for the maximum number of viewers on a personal Twitch account, 143,000. Not bad for a guy who was working at Best Buy only a few years ago. In fact, you can imagine, it was probably completely and utterly life-changing. But towards the end of 2013, his Twitch channel was starting to slow down. He was still the most followed personal channel at the time, but other people were napping at his heels as the platform was becoming more crowded. And at this point, if you wanted to get ahead of your peers, you needed to be willing to do things that other people wouldn't do. Well, Phantom was willing to do things that other people wouldn't do. And this is where a hacking group called Derp comes into things. You see, Derp Trolling, a, a hacking outfit which was actually run by a man called Austin Thomas from Utah, decided he was gonna start targeting Phantom Lord and promptly began DDoSing the League of Legends server he was playing on in order to bring down his stream. But rather than trying to defuse the situation, Phantom Lord saw an opportunity and went out and got in direct contact with Derp. All right guys, 
We're gonna talk to the men. And from here, he cut a deal with them that they would only DDoS his server if his team started losing at Dota 2. Well, Phantom Lord started losing and Derp started DDoSing. But it didn't stop there. Phantom moved to Club Penguin and Derp took that down and then onto a whole bunch of other games. And one by one, Derp took those down as well. But then, Derp found Phantom Lord's home address and started ordering him some delicious pizza. I, I guess they just figured he was hungry. But then they got bored of that and decided to order him some police officers instead who apparently thought there was a hostage situation going on. Now, Phantom Lord would play out this story, saying stuff like this on his live stream. Uh, there is three cop cars and about seven policemen. And the first thing I see is this guy leaning on the tree with a fully automatic. Like, you can clearly see how intense this gun is. And he went on to claim that he was handcuffed and ultimately about 15 cops showed up, including the police chief for some reason. And it does seem like the police were caught on him and he even has this picture to back it up, but there's no evidence for the 15 cops with assault rifles part and the LAPD denied his story. So make of that what you will. But either way, this was a win for Phantom. Derp quickly found himself doxxed, while Phantom found himself with 100,000 viewers, 14k new subs, international news coverage, and a comfortable new lead with his follower account on Twitch. He'd taken a risk, he'd put his stream in danger, he put himself in danger to get that notoriety. Not many people out there would be willing to do that, but Phantom was, and it worked. And the willingness to do things that other people wouldn't do was gonna come to define the rest of his career. And while it would lead to further success, eventually, it was going to become a lot more sinister. Now, 2014 appears to have been a pretty dry year for Phantom Lord. His follower growth was fairly flat, and by October, he'd fallen behind a number of new breakout streamers. Now, this probably wasn't his fault. It's just hard to keep growing indefinitely, but it also highlighted the fact that he was gonna need something new to really get his stream firing back up again. And around the end of the year, he found it. His new niche was CSGO skins. And at the time, public interest in case unboxing videos and high-risk trade-up contracts was booming. So as long as you had the money for it, there was a lot of views on the table. And Phantom sees the opportunity he got in early, he spent the money, and although many of his old League fans were understandably upset with his new direction, his channel quickly started going gangbusters again. Videos he made of case unboxing and trade-up contracts from around the time all seemed to have over 1 million views, way more than his League content, and his channel appears to have enjoyed a real bump in followers. In fact, he managed to jump several spots back up in the rankings, which is not easy to do when you're an older channel. Now, it's worth noting that at the same time, he was also pulling some other hijinks to get more attention. As I said before, Phantom was someone who was willing to do things that other people wouldn't. And I mean, not many people can say they licked a dog's arsehole in front of 18,000 people on Twitch. <coughs> and he was also doing some weird sexual stuff with his girlfriend on the stream at the time. I don't know how he didn't get a Twitch ban for this, although to judge by the view count on this video, his audience definitely seems to have been just as into it as he was. And between all of this, he really made himself stand out. His over-the-top reactions meshed really well with his new CSGO content, and I don't think his success should really surprise anyone. Now, around about April 2015, Phantom Lord was paid to advertise an innovative new website called CSGO Jackpot, which was basically a casino using CSGO skins as a currency. Now, this business model was definitely morally dubious. It was essentially an unregulated gambling business that was open to children, but it was a financial success, making about $20,000 per day. And Phantom Lord appears to have been impressed by what they were doing because he decided he was gonna make a gambling site of his own as a partnership with a trader called Care and a coder called Joris. Each person apparently had an equal stake and different responsibilities. Phantom was mostly responsible for the advertising, Joris was doing the coding, and Care was responsible for the skins. But importantly, the money was all flowing through Phantom Lord's Nevada-based company, Phantom Lord Inc., at which point he would pay Joris and Care their share. But Phantom Lord's ownership stake was kept a secret. The public had no idea. Phantom would advertise the website on his stream under the pretense that he was sponsored, but in reality, all the profits from the site were being paid directly into his private company. This is literally illegal in many countries, and 
it only got more shady from here. Shuffle was profitable pretty quickly, pulling in 30 to 40k per day. Phantom networked with the owners of OP Skins, the largest cash out site at the time, which made the process of getting paid even easier. But for Phantom Lord, it doesn't seem to have been enough, and he started pushing things even further. For one, he started gambling colossal amounts of money on the site, as much as 80k at a time, which pulled in huge numbers of viewers, but it was under the pretense that it was his own money he was spending on someone else's site, which it obviously wasn't. But even worse, he started to rig the jackpots he was entering, asking Joris to give him the role for the next jackpot in advance so he could make sure he won it, to make his gambling streams more exciting. And despite Joris's reluctance, over time, he started rigging stuff more and more aggressively. And not only did this give viewers the false impression of how easy it was to win on the site, it also meant he was cheating to beat other people in the pots he was gambling in. Basically, he was scamming people twice. That literally landed on someone else's name. <laughs> and then went back to mine. Now, some people were alarmed at just how much gambling he was doing, but these complaints tended to be downvoted to hell by Phantom's legion of fans, and it's clear from the comments that the people defending him genuinely believed his gambling streams were legit. Meanwhile though, not only was Phantom scamming his fans, he was also busy scamming his friends too. A whole bunch of them lost money on the site while gambling with him, and on top of that, he allegedly wasn't paying Karen Joris their fair share of the profits either, although I will say it's hard to know for sure whether that allegation is true. Eventually though, Phantom moved away from CSGO Shuffle in order to gamble on a different site called CSGO Wild. Now, CSGO Wild was run by a guy I'm only going to refer to as Dracula, a blood-sucking leech who was probably the biggest scumbag in the history of CSGO, with a litany of offences. I've had people tell me about how he'd waltz around Cologne 2016, boasting to people about the number of dragon laws he owned, which isn't what I call a sign of good character, but apparently he and Phantom hit it off and were really good friends. Now, it's not entirely clear why Phantom made the switch. One story suggests that he co-owned something called Kickback.com with Dracula, a site that CSGO Wild was partially integrated with, but either way, I'm sure Phantom Lord's personal income didn't go down after he changed sites, and his future, it seemed, was completely secure. He had a huge audience, he was making tons of money, he was a literal celebrity at Twitch events, but behind the scenes, the jungle drums were pounding, and not just because Valve had announced they'd be cracking down on gambling. In fact, Phantom actually got to work making a series of videos on making fun of the situation. Gamble Lord Part 1 hit the internet on July 15, 2016. But there would be no Part 2. I can't do that all the time. There's going to be some disappointments. On July 17, 2016, Esports journalist Richard Lewis released a bombshell video titled Phantom Lord and CSGO Shuffle. The video was based on a dossier of logs that had been acquired by a hacker who had broken into Joris's Skype. And this hack was not a secret either. In fact, the hacker had initially contacted CSGO Shuffle on Twitter to try and use the logs to extort money from the site, threatening to expose Phantom Lord if he wasn't paid off. Phantom had refused though, assuring his team everything would be alright. But the logs ended up in Richard Lewis's hands, and at that point, things definitely weren't all right. He were passed on chat logs, their exchanges between Phantom Lord and Joris. There are over 1,800 messages going back to the summer of last year, and me and Sam, my producer, have scoured all of them, and we're now going to present the choicest, the most incriminating exchanges that heavily imply wrongdoing on the part of Phantom Lord. Now, in this modern era of cancel culture, there have been many examples of someone being called out on the basis of dodgy evidence, only for the allegations to eventually be disproven and the accusers disgraced. But that is not what happened here. Richard Thurs' video was a result of painstaking investigation. We got the complete logs, like six months. So I said to Sam, like, we, uh, we need to go through this with a fine tooth comb and check that, you know, on the dates he's asking for percentages, did he stream? Is there a VOD? Uh, you know, did, oh look, he's saying he's doing a giveaway. Let's go on his Twitter and match it up. So what we created was basically a roadmap of six months of, tw uh, of, of Skype logs, or whatever it was, where it completely corresponded. So there was no argument in our mind as to whether these were fake or not. 
and that took a long time. And then after that, I tried to hit him up, and he was like busy. And I was like, "Look, it's pretty fucking urgent, dude. Like, I really need to talk to you." And then in the end, it got to a point where it was just like, "Listen, like, we got to pull the trigger on this because if we don't, like, every day we we sit on this. Every day we sit on this is another day somebody out there can can potentially get scammed." The logs laid out everything he'd been doing. They showed he owned the website. They showed he controlled the money the website was making. They showed he was gambling with house money. They showed he was rigging jackpots using a thing called a percent. And that over time, he started doing it more and more frequently. And they also showed that he was just kind of a dick. He didn't have one iota of remorse for the fact he was deceiving his fans for his own benefit. In fact, he even treated his co-owners with contempt at times. Phantom Lord says to him, uh, you still don't understand how far we've come and that I deserve some respect for that. You obviously don't get it. Dude, th this guy's your coder. Like, imagine if he testified against you in court at a later date. That'd be just devastating, right? So, in other words, Phantom had been exposed as a lying, manipulative scammer, and not a very nice one for that matter. His reputation was essentially trashed overnight, and the allegations hit him particularly hard because of the nature of his audience. Essentially, he had two types of fans, League of Legends fans who hated the fact he'd become a CSGO gambling streamer, and gambling fans who liked him because they thought he was streaming legitimate gambling. Well, for the disaffected League fans, this was vindication of all their complaints about his behaviour, but for his gambling fans, well, it destroyed any and all credibility he had in their eyes. Essentially, he'd been lying to them the whole time. Now, I've always wondered whether Phantom could have salvaged some credibility in the public's eyes if he tried at the time, but at the end of the day, it's a moot point because his actions from this point onwards only serve to damn him completely. First of all, rather than answering the allegations, he hid. I immediately after the story dropped, he apparently blocked Richard Dawes on Skype, but that is all we know for certain about his reaction. His socials went completely silent, and there were reports that he'd gone to ground and was no longer living at his address. And there's also various rumours that he might have had a mental breakdown in the aftermath of the story, and there is some tenuous evidence to support it, which we'll look at later. But either way, his silence was deafening, while in the meantime on Richard Lewis's YouTube channel, a steady stream of incriminating evidence continued to be fed to the public. Hilariously, his final tweet before he went dark featured this image and told people that big changes were coming to the stream, or words to that effect. Anyway, unfortunately it's now deleted and I couldn't find an archive, although the media definitely loved that photo. But in the meantime, something slightly odd was happening on Phantom Lord's Twitch channel. You see, a crowd of people were basically hanging out in the chat on the channel, partly to be there if he came online, but also to spam memes. And they started noticing something weird happening. In a tweet longer that he sent me, it says, The past couple of days I've been sitting in Phantom Lord's Twitch chat enjoying the memes. Not for too long, but enough to have a chuckle. Well, I noticed he keeps getting new subs roughly every 20 to 30 minutes. Oh, wow. Subs? After everything that's happened? But what sort of person would be subbing to Phantom Lord at the moment? The tweet longer goes on. He says, if you navigate to the user's profile, which we will now bring up on screen for you, you'll notice this person has zero following or followers. Kind of odd that the user is not even following Phantom Lord. Alone, maybe nothing to look at, but then the next sub is the same. Every single new Phantom Lord sub I've seen in the past two days are all at zero following slash followers. Oh, okay, bots. That's who. Now, buying fake subs on Twitch is a bannable offence, and if Phantom Lord was behind it, well, that was bloody stupid to be buying subs right after you've been publicly outed for gambling fraud on Twitch. And I don't know for certain if Phantom Lord was the guy who bought those subs, but I do know that three days later, on July 21, 2016, Twitch banned Phantom Lord's channel, and that ban was permanent. Phantom Lord the Twitch streamer was no more. A man who had over a million followers and 86 million views, a man who was once literally number one on the platform, had brought himself to ruin. But despite all of this, his public humiliation was only just beginning. One thing that definitely struck me while I was making this video is that Phantom Lord is basically a case of cancelling done right. Watertight accusations made by a professional that really were as serious as they sounded and actually merited his cancelling. Sure, the mob was still vicious, but 
the substance behind the allegations and the fact that they really cut to the core of who he was as a streamer completely changes the dynamic. But what fascinates me more about the case is the fact that the guy hasn't stayed away. He's actually attempted to rekindle some of his fame and rebuild himself. But the way he's gone about it is really a case study in how not to handle situations like this. So the first stuff he released to the public after the scandal was actually via Snapchat. A couple of months after the scandal broke, he posted snaps where he talked about fleeing to Mexico, as well as a video of him throwing money into a pool in a Vegas party. Not, not a great look. But in 2017, he started getting more serious about things. Now, I'm not talking about the fake cease and desist letter that was sent out with this very questionable logo, but I, I think it's funny, so I wanted to include it. But what I am talking about is this tweet he put out on July the 2nd, 2017, saying, at one year, truth. Now, the public response to this wasn't terribly warm. Anomaly, for example, took the opportunity to reply with a percent referencing the Skype logs. At this point, it was literally a meme. While Mo responded with a humble little request. Can I have my $30,000 back? And, and by the way, Mo is not pulling that number out of his ass. He lost 30k on Cisco Shuffle, 30k of his actual money. They weren't sponsored bets. He wasn't getting paid to do it. So he's a little bit bitter when it comes to Phantom Lord. He even scammed me personally and we met and I genuinely thought we were friends at one point. Now, the word truth might make you think that Phantom was going to address the allegations, but that is not quite what happened. Instead, he released this video called My Statement, but despite the title, it was not much of a statement. Now, Phantom Lord has long since deleted this debacle of a video, but luckily, Mo made a reaction video to it, preserving a lot of the juicy stuff. So right off the bat in this video, he stated that he couldn't address anything that happened because of legal reasons. He wasn't being sued, he was very clear about that, but he still couldn't say anything about what happened because of lawyers and stuff. However, he did try and make it sound like it was just a dispute between him and Twitch. As many of you are already aware, there is an ongoing dispute between myself and Twitch.tv. While I cannot and will not comment on the substance of this dispute, I assure you he, that I am considering all of my legal options. Like, he's... Why is the... He's trying to make it seem like the big problem with everything is between him and Twitch, and he's completely disregarding everything else. There was no acknowledgement of any of the gambling stuff, and indeed, there wasn't really any acknowledgement that he'd done anything wrong, but at the same time, he didn't really act like he was innocent either. I mean, he talked about how he needed to regain people's trust, but how the hell can you do that if you completely refuse to talk about what happened? Now, he also talked about how he needed to take a year off to get his head in order after the backlash over the scandal. And this lines up a little bit with that rumor that he had some kind of mental breakdown. However, I'm still pretty skeptical of it. I think if anything, it's more likely that, that rumor might be something that grew from this video. But finally, he also had a bit of reflection on the future of his career, and this stuff is actually really telling. So he started off by talking about his old job. Best Buy, five years. I used to sell movies and music. And then went on to talk about just how amazing it was to go from that to being a streamer. And then I got blessed with this job because you guys allowed me to. This is essentially a position that you guys allow me to. And from this, he started talking about just how much he missed it and wanted it back and how he needed to be there for the community. So what I'm gonna do now going forward is I wanna essentially be there for you guys. Phantom desperately tried to come off as the nice guy in this video, but people simply weren't buying it because they'd seen that behind the scenes, he'd just been a greedy asshole. And his refusal to acknowledge what really happened simply rubbed salt in the wound. God damn it, this guy's such a fucking moron. That like to dislike ratio says it all. And it's no surprise that such a crappy response was eventually deleted, but it definitely stands out to me how he talked so much about how he wanted his old career back. I, I think at some point it finally dawned on him that he was someone who had, by an extraordinary stroke of fortune, escaped from working a menial, minimum wage job for an amazing career as one of Twitch's top streamers, only to squander it through greed and recklessness. At this point, I really don't think his streaming career was about the money anymore to him. It was about the purpose the job had brought him. And it seems like at this point, he was just desperate to get it back and willing to suffer through all manner of humiliation if it meant he could build up a loving fan base again. Well, 
he certainly got humiliated. Now, at this point, Phantom has deleted a substantial part of the public record on this, presumably out of embarrassment, but there's enough left to give you a sense of just how hard he tried to break back into the space. In fact, for a while, he actually streamed pretty much every single day, which is a colossal effort, but it didn't really amount to anything. His first streams were on YouTube, starting on July 21, 2017. And it does seem like there were some people who were actually happy to see him back, although the reception on the whole was definitely pretty mixed. But at first, he does seem to have had a reasonable amount of support. I mean, the following day he asked for feedback on his subreddit, and even before the deleted negative comments, it still got 375 responses. But it seems like it was all downhill from there. The interaction on his Facebook post, which is probably a good indicator of the amount of attention his streams were getting, quickly dropped off, and dropped off a lot. Although, Phantom was very invested. I mean, barely a week after his first stream, he was already spending $3,000 on a giveaway. Now, his streams appear to have been a mix of League, Overwatch, and Gambling. And Phantom really tried to emphasize the fact that he was doing a range of things while he was live, writing literal wars of text about it on his subreddit. But honestly, the impression I get looking through his history on Facebook is that the gambling streams were definitely the most prominent. That said though, he didn't just recycle the same old crap the whole time either. No, he also cynically tried to latch on to whatever game happened to be trending at the time. Now, the first game he tried this on was Clash of Clans and it didn't really go anywhere. Although in the meantime, his interaction had definitely gone somewhere because it had collapsed to basically nothing. But Phantom wasn't giving up. In fact, he wasn't even close to. Firstly, he thought he'd try a bit of self-deprecating humour about the scandal, as if to suggest that he actually found it funny too and it was all just a bit of a laugh rather than some serious and potentially criminal conduct. Well, weirdly enough, that didn't win people over. Meanwhile, his streams continued to flop. Trying to get into PUBG didn't work. Trying to get into crypto didn't work. Gambling with Get Right didn't work. He also tried making YouTube videos, but the only thing really impressive about them was the number of dislikes he was getting. But even still, he was streaming pretty much every day all the way into 2018. Now, at this point, the output did seem to slow down a bit. He tried to get into Fortnite, although again, you know, definitely packing some impressive dislike numbers there on YouTube. But then, in early 2018, disaster struck. Valve took out gambling in one fell swoop by implementing a trade hold on CSGO skins. Oh no, what will our hero do? Well, get in on the VGO grift. That's what he did. But that definitely wasn't a smash hit either. In fact, the only thing Phantom was really succeeding at was having a bunch of people regularly spamming percent in his replies. But he kept on trying, even throughout all of 2019, streaming league and gambling in obscurity. But eventually, it does seem to have gotten to him. In early 2020, after a series of gambling videos he released on his channel flopped, he posted the following. Shit's been rough, but I still love you all. I think he finally realized he was done as a content creator, although how anyone with Social Blade ratings of less than 10% on their videos ever thought they had a chance to begin with is something I'll never understand. But he also had one more trick up his sleeve, and that would be suing Twitch. That's right, in February 2018, Phantom Lord launched a lawsuit against Twitch, claiming that his contract with them had been wrongfully terminated. Now, unsurprisingly, the lawsuit claims he was a good boy who didn't do nothing. But the most interesting thing is how he addresses Richard Lewis's CSGO Shuffle video, because he explicitly states in the lawsuit that it's untrue and unchecked speculation. That's right, even in his legal submissions against the billion dollar corporation, Phantom Lord isn't willing to admit anything about the scandal. In fact, he essentially labels it a malicious hoax. Now, it's one thing to do that on your irrelevant YouTube stream that only 50 people are watching, but it's another thing to do that in a court case when the other party can and will show you're guilty as hell when it comes to these allegations. And let me promise you, Twitch's response lays it out in detail and shows how Phantom was a very naughty boy in a whole bunch of other ways. And they're even trying to get Joris involved with a trial. Hmm, being a dick to him might come back to haunt you a bit here, Phantom Lord. But even still, our boy is keeping a positive outlook. In fact, he is hoping for at least $35 million worth of damages. My case is looking towards $35 million plus um, in damages. And that's, that's like minimum. It could go beyond that. Yeah, good luck with that, bruh. I hope you get a percent. But either way, I can't explain this insanity. He's refusing to admit what happened in the one context where it's simply not possible to try and sweep it under the rug. And it really begs the question, 
Does this guy honestly think he's done nothing wrong? Well, I think the video has gone on long enough. Let's get to our conclusion. Why won't he admit what happened? I, I don't know. Despite all the research I've done, I don't know why Phantom Lord won't admit what he did. In fact, I found it super ironic to see him parody T. Martin because T. Martin actually made a more honest apology video. The irony is though, he's poisoned his brand so much that it's really hard to imagine him ever having been likeable. In fact, I feel like I had trouble capturing it in my videos. And occasionally, I'd find comments like this from old fans questioning whether the likeable guy they used to know from the early days was just a facade. But honestly, I don't think it was. I think fame changed this man, but I also think a lot of the characteristics that ruined him were there from the beginning. Phantom was ambitious. He was a risk taker. He was willing to do things that other people wouldn't. But I think the problem was that by the end, it was about him, not the audience. And that's when the greed destroyed him. But at the end of the day, the mob has had its revenge here. It's clear to me that this guy just wants his career back, but despite literal years of effort, all he's been left with is a plate of shit, trapped in humiliating irrelevance with a horde of detractors reminding him of just what he did every single day everywhere he went. He couldn't get away from it, and while he might smile into the sunset and act like he's some sort of martyr for the community, no one is buying it, and I think deep down he knows the truth. Phantom Lord is a man who was once number one on Twitch. He had a huge fan base, he made tons of money, and he was treated like a celebrity. But these days, he only exists as the punchline to a joke. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like, comment, subscribe. Massively appreciated. And a big thank you to Skinport for sponsoring this channel. Skinport, formerly known as Skin Bay, it's the same site. All that's changed is the name, is a skins marketplace, and cash out site. It's safe, convenient, easy to use. It's got a super competitive sales fee of 5% if you put skinport.com in your username. A really, really low fee if you're looking to sell your skins. If you're looking to buy instead, it's got a ton of great deals with over 100,000 CSGO skins listed as well as easy to use deposit and withdrawal options. Awesome site, check it out. Link is in the description. Anyway, that's it from me. As always, trust the numbers, not your guts. I'm Jesus. Thanks for watching. See ya.